The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Savannah Hugh Moeller, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. Go! <laughs> Go! Team of the <laughs> Are we supposed to be playing this? Yes, we yeah, are. It's Friday. Friday. Okay. So, so you when, know what? Win, win or lose. Win or lose. Win. No, this oh, is that's this, this is pregame. This is pregame pepper. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We don't. We play it on Monday after a victory. We didn't play it obviously this past Monday, and I think the real reason that the Cowboys did not win in Arizona last Friday is because we had a false start on <laughs> Stampede on Friday. Well, I mean, when you look at it, it's Victory Friday. That means that we there had to be a victory uh, somewhere no, in the Vic- past. No, it's a, no we're looking ahead. Oh, we're okay, ahead. okay, okay. I think that we need Berkner another song then. We need another song. Didn't they have pep rallies at Berkner High School? <laughs> they did, but it yeah, didn't matter whether we won matter. or lost. It didn't matter what you did the week before. <laughs> okay. You're going to kick Pierce's butt this week, I, I right? thought we were grown men. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I didn't know yeah. we were doing with high school <laughs> attitudes here. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it is a beautiful day for football. A fabulous football Friday here in Frisco at the Star inside the SWBC podcast studio. Now, Savannah truly is on assignment today. <laughs> yes. What does that mean? <laughs> we figured, Why do I feel so funny about we that? Fig- we figured you, you, you give it you you never say, a wink, wink over there. <laughs> you never say what you're doing. We figured you're in undercover situation somewhere in New Mexico. Hey, hold up. I was with my people, right? And, and one of them said, yeah, I listened to the podcast. They say you were on assignment? What are they talking about? <laughs> I'm too funny. And so Savannah truly is on assignment. And we welcome Everson Walls back. Back from something. Yeah, just in time to talk Bill Belichick and the oh, New man. England Patriots. I couldn't miss this, man. You know that. That's I couldn't right. miss and this. It's, 90, it's a high of 95 <laughs> degrees here today, I think. It was 97, I think, yesterday. It was hot there, not, yeah, I mean, and finally, there's going to be a cold front next week. You know what it's doing in New England right now? It's snowing. Man. It's a downpour. And you know where the New England Patriots are? They're the, out on the practice field in a course downpour. They are. Oh, they're not. Yeah, yes, they are. Of course they are. Yes, they are. I just t- retweeted a tweet from Mike Reese, the Reese's Pieces, yeah, the yeah. veteran reporter up there in Boston. Good and one, he's, too, by the way. And he is out there on the field in the rain uh, doing a little selfie report. And so it wait shows, a and so it shows <laughs> Belichick and the Patriots out in a driving rainstorm <laughs> getting, ready, getting ready to come to come AT&T to, Stadium. And, and, and what kind of weather is one of them? To, to play in air conditioned comfort. Right. With the, with the, the, it's closed. The uh-huh. roof will be closed, so therefore there will be no rain. Uh huh. So Unless it's like, no, we're not going to have a victory Kool Aid. Well, yet. we no, know we're not that it, it ain't rained near in about, since, since about May, <laughs> so it, it ain't going to rain on Sunday, That's even crazy. if the roof was. Now, open. What's the point, man? So the Cowboys uh, are hoping they just have a. W- Terrible practice today because of the rain. <laughs> Get you know, nothing was, done. I, so I was driving in thinking, okay, what's the psychology behind? I can't get it. I can't get it. And so I was so happy when Everson's in here because <laughs> Everson played for Bill Belichick. He could be the Belichick whisperer. Uh-huh. I and played for the uh, New York and Cleveland Belichick. That's a totally different Belichick. Okay. You well, know, he this that one made more sense to me. This one. You know, I was thinking maybe he's looking at it that, okay, the conditions are horrible today, okay. and it's going to be so much better when you get out on the field Sunday. He's preparing. He, it, It's like you put stress on your team during practice so that practice is tougher than the game. Well, to me, it, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> because it's like having a balloon ball. Right. Practice, practice with a balloon ball, but uh, then you get in the game, it ain't a balloon ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's a regular ball. Yeah, so so anyway. There, <laughs> maybe maybe we can – the only person we know over there is Zeke. We, we ask him about, what does it feel like to practice in the rain? Uh-huh. I'm yeah. hoping he's over there going, help me. Well, it, it made sense last <laughs> week because they did play in a driving rainstorm. In, not, maybe not driving, but mm, it was right. in the rain against the Jets in the game they won. So. Anyway, that could be the other psychology of it. See how well you did in the rain on Sunday? We need to worry about our psychology. That's okay. what we need to worry about. 
How, I mean, how are we going to approach this game, Spags? Uh, if uh, Dak Prescott has anything to say about it and J. Ron Curse, uh, C.D. Lamb, most people that talked yesterday, they're going to approach it pissed off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and still, uh, after they lost that game Sunday the way they did, uh, I think it's one thing to lose. I think it's the way they lost that is still eating at them uh, right now. So it looked like some people quit. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think quit. I mean, how do you drive? I don't know seventy some yards to get to the five yard line, mm-hmm. and then you decide to quit. Yeah. No, don't give them. That's too easy of an excuse. They just got beat. Got I, I, I saw the frustration. In uh, C.D. Lamb, was that based on his own play or the fact that he didn't In the game? It, in the game itself. Because he was wide open and they missed him in yeah. the end zone. <laughs> well, and, and the one that uh, – I guess I couldn't see the angle well. It seemed as if he was looking for the P.I. call on one. Is that the same play you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the one there was nobody around him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, to me, I'm looking at the one where he had – Well, yeah. And he was he, contested. Right. Uh, did he look for a call and then just give up on the play? Is that what he was looking for? No, I think he just thought that it didn't be completed and you, you, there was a reason for it. Oh, he was pissed off. But not as, much, not as much as Michael Gallup should have been. So, man, you, you know, you're mincing words here, bro. What are you trying to say, man? Come on, man. We're well, there on. was an interference in the end zone that they picked up the flag. Uh, okay, that one. But is he saying that Dak is not getting it to him properly? Oh, I, I'm saying he was open, and they never looked that way. Uh-huh. But now that's what I saw. Yeah. See, and you can't double, you know, once you look another way, then it's over for that. It's hard to come back to exactly. the left when he kept looking right. Yeah. And he threw a little dump So he wants pass. to be uh, targeted pre-snap. I mean, you know, come to me regardless. Don't well, even look away from that's me. That's what he said. That's what he's thinking. Gotcha. That's what he said in his I'm just trying deal. to get the temperature of the room to me. here, Spag. Come to me. I've been gone, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's animosity. I Bill's kind of quiet over there. He had said pissed it. off, and that's good. Mm-hmm. They should. It's be. good that Bill's quiet. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> Bill thinks maybe you're right. <laughs> I'm just no. Trying it's, to get the it's temp shots. We got to hear Mick get the shots here. So Mickey, how's the offensive line looking? Well, it certainly looked better yesterday in practice than it did the day before mm-hmm. when. Uh, Zach Martin and Tyler Biotis were on the cords. They were actually in pads, actually practicing. Now, they listed them as limited, uh, and it was only limited, not physically. It was limited by the number of reps they took because I think they maybe got a little smarter and gave the backup some reps just in case the same thing happens Coach again. Coach had alluded to that. Yes, that, maybe that they would they... do that, and I think they did it at left tackle mm-hmm. also, or mm-hmm. they should have. Let's put it that way, right. uh, with a doga dealing with his elbow. Um, so what would be who would be the candidates? I would left say Awesome then? Richards. Okay. Because uh, anybody else on this Tyler offensive Smith, line who has ever played Tyler left tackle? Smith on was, <laughs> Tyler Smith was asked about it, and he said, "I haven't taken any snaps at left tackle." And somebody goes, "Oh yeah, would you tell us the truth?" And with a very serious, straight face, he said, "I would not lie to the media." <laughs> That's so a, there. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who who is Bill trying to get to, man? I mean, that's, that's, you hit on it right there. <laughs> okay. You hit on it right yeah, there. Yeah, because everybody thinks that, you know, and I'm kind of with them, that mm-hmm. Tyler Smith should go out to left oh, tackle. Okay. If Tyrants, because okay. he hasn't practiced all week. Right. And I don't think that bodes well for him being in the game on Sunday. And it, it, it's good for us. I mean, we've had this happen before. It came out okay, right? But the weird thing is, is he dressed for the game. And I think I said it on Monday. He was supposed to be available in an emergency situation, and I thought there was an emergency. Mm. The other thing that's different from last year, when Tyron got hurt uh, before the season started yeah. and Tyler Smith – who had not taken any snaps at left tackle during the offseason, preseason, his rookie mm-hmm. year. Yeah. He kicks out to left tackle. The other thing that's changed, there's a new offensive line coach this year. We don't know how Mike Solari feels about uh, where Moving Tyler, guys. Tyler, well, even where Tyler Smith's best position is. But I think you have to take into account that he hadn't played a game yet, right? He hadn't played a game since last year until 
against right. sure. Arizona. Sure. So you practiced all week at, at Oh, I'm not, I'm not saying that they would have oh. uh, last week, but I'm saying with a week now. And, and, and the fact that Tyler, oh, you mean Tyler is week. now saying yeah. he has not taken any snaps at left tackle, it might be that the new offensive line coach feels like Mike, Mike Solari may feel like that Tyler Smith's best position on this team is at left guard. I don't know. Mm. That's what I said when we first drafted him. <laughs> That's why you see your I've always guard said that. in the first round. I've always said that. Yeah, and then you got to put two tight ends to the left side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you see what Green Bay did last night? No. They had all their offensive line beat up, mm -hmm. missing at least two starters. Well, it David Bakhtiari went on injured reserve. Right. A uh, long time left tackle, and his career may be over. Uh, we'll see. But um, – they acted and they like they were missing Elg Elgston Jenkins, their left guard, right. as well. So they they were they were acting like no big deal. Our backups are in. Yeah, five seven step d drops, and Love was getting the ever living daylights beat out of them because they couldn't protect them. And, and then they he, were down twenty seven to three at halftime. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. See what can happen when you're missing your offensive line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and by you, the way, Detroit's offensive line playing very well, and, and they, they've invested in their offensive line. And then they didn't compensate. For what they didn't have out there was like, okay, next man up. Well, next man up ain't the man. So you better be careful. And I think that's what the Cowboys did uh, to some extent on Sunday against Arizona. You know, you look around the league and teams that are doing well, throw out Detroit. I'll throw out, I'll include Dallas in this, mm -hmm. Philadelphia in it, Miami. San Francisco, seems like uh, most all Buffalo would be another one. Mm -hmm. They're strong up front. Yep. Whether it be offensive line or defensive line, they're strong up front. As I say, and, not and the Cowboys, the one game that they, they weren't, they won't, they were missing three starters on their offensive line. I mean, but you got to have your, you got to build that depth on your offensive line because you got to be able to afford to lose one or two. Well, they just did. They kind of paid for it, yeah. But they got guys snaps that hadn't had snaps like that, uh, at least two of them in their entire career, career. Um, so uh, I would imagine today uh, they sign uh, or Saturday they'll probably wait till Saturday. Uh, Brock Hoffman to the 53-man roster after releasing Harper. Uh, the that's linebacker. right. That's the other thing that happened here in the last 24 hours. Right. Devin Harper, the linebacker, was uh, released. I keep wanting to say Ron Harper. Is there a Ron Harper? Of a basketball player named Ron Harper. Basketball, Bulls, right? Man, yeah. Ron Harper. Um, um, <laughs> so, and I would imagine they, they looked at someone to release that they thought might get through waivers and mm -hmm. they can put them on the practice squad. Because mm -hmm. basically practice was over for the week yesterday. I mean, this yes. is the yes. regeneration day here, and then you have your practice All right. tomorrow before the game. Got a and tour coming by the way, this is a yes, Friday a tour. That's a huge lot of tour people. coming through. Right. Huge weekend, by the way, right. of football right. at AT&T Stadium. Not only the Cowboys and the Patriots at 325 on Sunday, but at 11 a.m. This is a lot of people. This, this is one of the <laughs> long coming. coming. It just, just keeps keep, on coming. Keep the keep clown, it's like here. the clown car, right? There was uh, so and, many people. Uh, there's the, there we go. There is the end. End of the train. Long time. Tour yeah. running. Yep. And uh, 11 a.m. tomorrow, it's the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Texas Aggies mm. at AT&T Stadium. I thought I might see uh, some Arkansas red or some, red. some uh, Aggie colors coming through on that tour. Some black and gold, Cowboys man. It's Grambling PV this weekend. At the oh, Cotton man, that's Bowl. the other? Yeah. Come on, man. I'm talking to okay, the team tonight. This? They're winning. I'm talking Are you to the really? team. I'm talking to the team tonight. You're talking yeah. to the team yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Come okay. On. Check out the college football Saturday okay. just in town tomorrow. Okay. Okay. You got Texas A&M and Arkansas at mm -hmm. AT&T Stadium. You got, I think you got four. SMU's uh, at home. SMU's at home against Charlotte. TCU's at home against West Virginia. And I think North Texas may be at home also. And then at the Cotton Bowl, he has this great state fair of Texas kicks off today. That's right, you got boy. got that annual clash between Grambling and Prairie View. Which I heard, I heard this thing on the radio. They were good. I can't remember who came out with it. They had their top 20 party schools. 
Grambling was one of them. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Top twenty. We finally made it. How do you How do you party <laughs> in in, in, Gra- in uh, Ruston? In Ruston, in Ruston right? Louisiana. <laughs> hey, that just lets you know, man, how we are. You know, this is good stuff. North, and, and, uh, and producer Supreme just informs me that North Texas does play Abilene Christian tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So, Cal. so the, the Kansas Texas game. And, and that's in, in Austin tomorrow afternoon at 2.30. Boy. Right. What do you think? Uh, I think Texas, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, Kansas beat BYU last week, and uh, they're – That was a big win. Can, BYU's here. not bad. Can, what happened the last time Kansas went down to Austin? They beat the Longhorns. Mm. What happened last year, though, when the Longhorns went up to Lawrence? They beat them like 55 to 14. They smoked them. Yeah, they... Where's Oklahoma? Uh, they're at home against Iowa State. Very which good. gets us ahead to next week. Could be the first time in over a decade next both week. Teams? Yeah, both they teams. They don't trust you guys, man. Be. You are 4-0 and oh and you're just barely in the top 25. Talking Missouri? Yeah. Missouri. Yeah. yeah. Missouri's in the top 25? Yeah. They're 20, When's the last time they But they're 4-0. Oh. I mean, they're 4-0. and oh. They should be higher. With a win well, over Kansas State, of, the reigning well, Big 12 champion. Them, that's what got them in. And they beat And who's Missouri playing this week? At Vanderbilt. So you're 5-0. and oh. Uh, they need to be, mm-hmm. and then they meet LSU in Columbia. Ooh. How about that? Tigers versus Tigers. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm. You yeah. Feeling confident about that? Uh, no. He is not. I was going <laughs> to answer that for him. That would be a big knot. <laughs> but, and, uh, but you never know when you got mm-hmm. them at home. And before we go to break here, um, did you stay up and – Yes, I did. To the baseball yes, I night. did. Even though I knew what was going to happen, I, know, I knew it, it was like I did the ten o'clock I said, Why sports, are you and doing I said, this? I said, "Can you tack on some runs? We need some insurance <laughs> runs here." And it was a two to one, going to the ninth inning. Mm. And by the way, they did find a pitcher this month, a relief pitcher, in Jose Leclerc. Yeah, and, oh, he, nice. and he comes in. Yes. He comes in. And the first two outs in the eighth inning, you got him like on the first pitch. Okay. And throws nine pitches in the eighth inning. Okay. Okay. He's still available. You can bring him. There's no rule against bringing him. He's not tired. For the night. He's not he, tired. Even and I don't care that he did the pitch night the night before. He's yeah. done that before. Okay. But and he's a young man. He's you a young a man. Chance, you have a chance to clinch a playoff spot. Okay. Running back out there, but no. I'm listening on mm. uh, on uh, the radio broadcast. Walk uh-huh. off. Walk off. And I'm yelling at the receiver, no! <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, Chapman, without getting an out, loads the bases. But now, it was a, they were relatively cheap. Hits to start, mm-hmm. but they were mm-hmm. hits. Okay, but and, they were hits. But that's why that's how it all starts off. Well, and okay, yeah. two singles, <laughs> and then the next pitch goes to the backstop. So See what I'm they, were, they were talking about, well, do you sacrifice the runners over? No, he's just going to heave it to the backstop. <laughs> not, not got the runners over until you, you walk the heard, next guy, and it's down the bases are loaded, nobody out. You should have heard Eric Nadell's call on the wild pitch. He goes, and that one's wide to the backstop and ten feet. <laughs> Just it's, hard to, it's hard to keep your professionalism as you criticize right. mercilessly. Uh-huh. <laughs> so anyway, so they didn't they didn't clinch last night, and now uh, they go for it again tonight in Seattle. And if they win and the Astros lose, they not only clinch a playoff spot, they clinch the American League West. But this okay. could be going on all weekend <laughs> here, Everson. So that's and, all right. I, and I heard, and I heard they were already. Um, oh, they had the champagne yes. ready to go. Oh, I mean, they were the See, reporters we, were outside. They had the, tire, the Rangers they had the, don't know how to do that. <laughs> they don't know they how had to do it. All that. the lockers you, covered you with the plastic and everything. You don't and, celebrate until you win the division. Yeah, I, that's the other thing. They shouldn't have been celebrating last night if they won anyway. Yeah, yeah. save mm. it for the division. Yeah, okay. But that's our baseball talk for today, and we're mm. not going to get into Ryder Cup, but we are going to get into Cowboys Patriots when we come back in a moment. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at Blockchain.com. 
You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite in the cool. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Back, back to Mick Shots. Case Post Roofing and Waterproofing, the official roofer of the Dallas Cowboys. All right. It's not the same, but we'll it'll have to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, she missing, is missed. We're missing you, Oh, Savannah. Savannah. We miss her. Now, you did get Savannah's picks. Yes, I did. Okay, oh, okay cool. All right. Coming up, we'll have our picks to click. Mm-hmm. And who's going to win this affair on mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon? I need to hear a Bill Belichick story or... Or at least a Everson, uh, what you would expect Bill Belichick to do with his defense against this Cowboys offense. Talking with Mike McCarthy yesterday, um, he was saying you just you, you know you you have to expect something, but you don't know what to expect. Yeah. He's going to do something uh, to try to trick things up for you. But you know, not just trick things up. He wants to keep it as simple as possible. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he has the talent for that, defensively especially. Uh, that's what he's going to hang his hat on. He's not going to – his offense, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what Zeke does, they don't really look to stay out of trouble against this Dallas defense. I think they, they know what they're in for. And just with, with Bill, sometimes he knows if we don't do well in a certain part of the game, this particular Patriots team, he doesn't throw in the towel, but he would – He'll play not to lose. Why do you think this Patriots defense is good? It's, uh, they had 54 sacks last year. They were second in the league in takeaways behind the Cowboys. They returned virtually is everybody. Is that right? Yep. Wow. And uh, they returned virtually everybody. The only guy that they didn't return is Devin McCourty, who retired. And then they added in the draft – uh, Christian Gonzalez in the first round, the cornerback out of the colony. Mm-hmm. Uh, and <laughs> Keon White, second round, who's playing a lot as, uh, up front on their defensive line. They got another local guy, Dietrich Wise, out of Hebron High School. He said this is the first time he'll be playing back home in, in the Metroplex since his uh, career started about six or seven years ago. Uh, he, but he, but he, what he, is it that, that – that, that, he signs players card. that he trusts. Yep. yep. He signs players that he trusts. I don't care what the talent is. You know, you're not going to be the fastest, but you better be good at something that appeals to his style of coaching. You know, and I think, and he gets criticized a lot. The Patriots get criticized on their drafts. They they do they in their history they've done a good job of a, taking the Jimmy Johnson approach and acquiring enough picks and mm-hmm. moving around to be able to you can take flyers on guys. But they there's a lot of bust in their drafts. But I think what is uh, makes Bill Belichick so good as a personnel man is how much he personally invests in the draft mm-hmm. and he knows these players, all the players in the draft every year. He, I mean, he's... He has no hobbies, apparently. Uh, you know, you, you, I do love the way he coaches. I, 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 what, I, what you see is sometimes the, the pool isn't as deep as he wants it to be. And now he's got to uh, improvise. It was easy to improvise 
with the 1986 Giants team. Mm-hmm. It was easy to improvise with the 1990 Giants team. You know, that's, that's easy. You had the you didn't miss. The opportunities were there to sign these particular players. Now he's dealing with something a little different, and especially when you're looking at the quarterback position. To me, it's a, it's a position that's extremely inconsistent for him, yep. and he's not accustomed to that. All right. But, uh, I mean, you look at the, the defense. He knows those players so well coming into the draft that when they then become available, whether it's two years in, in free agency, whatever – He's got a good read on mm-hmm. whether they would fit his system or not, or even fit from a character standpoint. So right. Matthew Judon, I mean, this is a guy who had 15 and a half sacks last year. Yes. He's already got four sacks in three games really? this year. And, I mean, he is polished as a pass rusher. Are we looking at picks to click? And, and, and he's a, you know, but he's a guy out of, he was a fifth round pick out of Grand Valley State Division II wow. school. You know, he was a fifth round pick of Baltimore. But when he became available, that was a guy that Belichick had penciled in that, hey, this guy, this guy fits here. Mm-hmm. And he's, his career has blossomed in New England. Another guy, Kyle Duggar, second round pick in 2020. You know where Lenore Ryan is? Yep. <laughs> you do? North Carolina, right? Hickory, North Carolina. <laughs> wow. Division II school. That's right. You know, there was a former Cowboys coach that went to Lenore Ryan uh, under Parcells. Old-time coach. He was here, Coach Jason Witten. Mike Pope. Oh, oh tight ends wow, coach. that's my yeah, dude. That's right. Yeah, Mike Pope went to <laughs> Lenore Ryan. But Kyle Duggar, I was looking at him because uh, – um, Will McClay was featuring him on the Mike McCarthy show, the Telestrator yeah. segment that he does. Duggar, okay, he's in his fourth year now, was a second-round pick. I mean, you talk about uh, he's got athleticism. Uh, back in combine, he had 42 vertical, 11-foot broad jump guy. And so they've got – They've got some athletes on their defense, too. This Christian Gonzalez, I mean, he's a four three eight guy with a 40 vertical. And if you look this year, he's three games into his uh, rookie year. He's got already got an interception. He, he They had him playing on the interception that he had against the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Go, go look at that play. He was actually playing safety. And the ball skills, the athleticism, going back, he, they sent Tyreek Hill out of the backfield on a wheel route. And he read it. And he got in position, high point of the ball, and uh, I mean, he is a really hmm. impressive athlete. This Christian Gonzalez is. That's what Everson needed in Arizona. Hmm. <laughs> Do you, okay, so I double checked this. That was this. a cheap shot. I, I'm counting it. I'm counting it up. Eleven draft picks are on their roster. Eleven. That's amazing that you have multiple like sixth round picks. And they're all on the roster. And you're talking about this year's? Yeah, right now. 11, 11 picks in this year's draft? Well, look, D1. Well, they had, they had 11 picks in the draft this year. Well, they all made it. I counted 20, D23. Christian Gonzalez, first round. Keon White, second, second round. round. Marte Mapu in the third round. And right. They had, they had a run of offensive linemen that are all on the roster in the fourth in the, they had three offensive linemen in the fourth round, all interior guys. Jake Andrews, uh, City Sal, I don't know, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing Sal that right. and, and Antonio and, Maffi. And Maffi, mm-hmm. yeah. And then you got a wide receiver and Keishon Butte, two wide receivers, Demario and Demario Douglas, Douglas out of Liberty, who's yeah. playing for him. So, and yeah. that's unusual because he he loves going with veteran veteran guys, guys right? right? And he's got so he must but have he some does, plans. He well, unders, yeah, he understands how you you got to. Build your roster. That's right. Um, C.D. Lamb was talking about how, you know, Parcel. I mean, Parcells, Belichick, it will always come up with something different to mm-hmm. take away the best guy. And they said, well, do you think they're going to take you away? And he goes, well, if they want to, but we got other guys. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the thing people need to slow down on is the Brandon Cooks thing. Uh, everybody forgets he missed the Jets game. Uh, and you don't just – you know, suffer a sprained MCL, and then the next week you're 100%. Yeah. So he should be better uh, this who, game than he was the Cooks, previous game. by the game. way, who played for Bill Belichick right. in New England, as yeah, did Stephon right. Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah, no one's made a big deal about those guys playing Belichick. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. It's right. all about Zeke. Yeah. Which, by the way, Jerry uh, finally admitted, Bill, 
he was thinking like we were thinking. They have a homecoming ceremony? No. And well, they are. Homecoming king? And- uh, no. He said, I was laying in the woods hoping nobody would offer Zeke anything, and I was going to re-sign him. Mm-hmm. And he said, and the minute I got a phone call from Bill Belichick, <laughs> I knew I wasn't getting him back. <laughs> That's tough. Said that on his radio show, but he's he he said if if he We've was still all sitting there, and he well he, he basically right said price. that he uh, he, also, he said that in our sit down in August, yeah, that uh, he had, didn't rule out the right. possibility that as we get on into the season that he would uh, he called it late. Was that in CBS the woods. Bill Jones Channel Eleven? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was laying in the woods. He said. So what kind of day do you think Zeke will have on Sunday? I think a heavy dosage. I don't know how far he's going to go, but I know he's going to get. I mean, he had 16. He's going to get opportunities. Week. Yes. You know, he's actually he's looking uh, stronger than Stevenson is right now. Uh, you I know, mean, not, maybe not stronger, but this. And Stevenson's getting the first dose, and so it could be that now. Zeke's in that position where he's the number two guy. Okay, it, it's almost like being like the second quarterback. Okay, you know, the number two guy is in better favor than the number That's one right. guy. When yeah. you go to a different team, you have to show them you can do different things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's best for that. And if Zeke can show it, I think they're going to use him a lot more on the pass. And you know, he just didn't do well later in his years with us. He just didn't seem to have the footwork and catch it. I think he's working on a new him, and he will be able to be more more of use to them uh, out in the flat. You know, and some of it was at times they would have Zeke running routes, like an out route or something, like he would a slot receiver, and no, just screen pass to Mm -hmm. him, you know? And and get it to him where he can face the defender. Exactly. They kept trying that a little bit last year, but either Dak wasn't throwing it right, and and when he was – I think he was – too much looking at where he's going to go as opposed to catching the ball first. And well, it looked very awkward. I got a suggestion for him. What's that? They need to use real defensive ends at defensive ends that can set the edge and let Parsons play linebacker. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to come at him, I guarantee you, with two tight ends, and they're going to hand oh, him the ball. Oh, you know they saw that from last week. Right? <laughs> it's a done deal. They're going to hand it him is the a, ball. You better be he's ready. He's going to come heavy. You, mm-hmm. you better be ready with three and linebackers. It's going to be a lot of three yards and a cloud of. That's right. Yeah. And, which is the way Belichick loves and to Zeke play Zeke will get up every time laughing. He's going to do the same. See, what? it's going to be a double barrel Stevenson and Zeke between the tackles running. What he used to do, we're going to take the excitement out of this. That play that he almost made or could have made, it's not going to even exist because we're in position to negate it, period. That's the way he likes to play it. Keep it within shouting distance. That's what he wants. As soon as he thinks that you think that it's going to be a lot of power (laughs) between the tag, he'll be in shotgun 25 straight (laughs) snaps and throwing the ball every every play. That's that's funny. That's him. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. All right, our picks to click. And who wins on Sunday when we come back on Mix Shots? The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite in the cooler. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. 
You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. <sighs> back, back to Mick Shots. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mark your calendars and get your... Letter Hosen and Steins Ready Frisco Oktoberfest officially returns for their fourth annual celebration on Saturday, October 7th at the Star in Frisco, featuring Bavarian inspired activities, delicious food and drink, and plenty of great live entertainment. Visit the stardistrict.com slash events for more info. Frisco Oktoberfest. Sounds like a lot of pretzels. Beer. Sounds good. <laughs> it's a week from tomorrow, Saturday, October 7th. I won't be here. At the Star in Frisco. That's right. Next week, what's, what's the dance the that they do? What's the dance that they do? The river walk? They're going to be doing the river dance? River Polka? Dance. The river dance. The river dance? Yeah, you the, know. The river dance. You know what I'm talking about? I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they they look cute. They they the feet be uh, Oh, no, okay. Yeah. Isn't that what that's that's that the October the Fest? Yeah. That's why I, I said know. poker. Yeah. Didn't I, I say know. that? I don't know. Did you All ever right. go to the the thing in in West Texas Texas? No. I do stop there often, though. They do. Mm -hmm. They do the polka at okay. their West Fest. Sounds like you've been there. Before. I have. Have you done the polka? I think there? twice. <laughs> Sounds like Freak Nick in Atlanta. Have you been to Freak Nick? Freak Nick. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. I don't know if we need to talk about. No, that. we don't. Need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last few minutes here of mix shots uh, for the week, and uh, anything else you want to cover before we get to our picks? Um. Injuries, more injuries, anything? You Surprise? No, because we, we missed a lot. Of, we line missed a lot of surprises line. last game, guys. Yeah, that's right. Jeez. You know, they on. were you all know, surprises. You know something there. Is something no, going on. They all happened on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Tyron happened Saturday was when and almost we found Sunday. Out he didn't. He wasn't on the practice report until Saturday. It was, was a late crazy. ad. Yeah, at least this week it's DNP, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I look for this offense to open up in this game because there's no excuses if if you have two you're assuming that Biotish if and two Martin of the three offensive go. linemen are playing then I don't think you have to play with a scared hand I think that Brandon Cooks uh, a, a two weeks removed from his sprained knee uh, will be uh, a factor and I think that they will not be afraid to take five or seven step drops mm -hmm. to throw the ball down the field and get some big plays. So I think this game is going to be a more reflection of what this offense can do or wants to do than the first three games. You had rain in the Giants. Uh, you had a lead in the Jets that weren't going to come back unless you turned the ball over. And you were behind the eight ball with the injuries on the offensive line against Arizona. So there's no seemingly extenuating circumstances to hold this offense back. I think they're going to rely a lot more heavily on Dak to make those decisions that he didn't make last week. Uh, but also, not too many changes between the 20s because they were, they were successful. I look at them to be either... Let's score outside the 20 before we get into the red zone. But they're definitely going to concentrate on more red zone uh, success. We have a text from Nate I in see it. Frisco. Uh -oh. let, me make, let me read it before I <laughs> read it out loud. I got it. If the interior D-line do their job and Micah Parsons and D-Law set the edge. Everything will be okay. Nate, Nate in Frisco. <laughs> we want to make sure we don't get mixed up with Nate in Plano. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> right. I don't know why he doesn't just I say I like that. That's some great insight. I do love it. Nate do next love door. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, for real. All yeah. right. Time to uh, make our picks. You want to go with the podcast 
pick. Pod pick first. Pod pick. Pod pick. Okay, this is the pod pick that is seen by the world. If the defense <laughs> runs one in, does that count? <laughs> yes, that? it could. I said count. if the defense runs one in, <laughs> does that does. count? Uh, here's, okay, here's the question. What's the question? On the pod pick. Yes. It's the first rushing touchdown oh, rushing. in this game, either team. So it can be a Patriot oh, wow. or wow. a Cowboy. Wow. wow. First rushing touchdown. That's a change. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to change it, though. I'm not well, because sure. I'm thinking, no, I'm meaning I'm changing my head on who's going to do it. Okay, so Everson, you I'm go first stick on the with pod it. pick. I'm going to stick with it. Uh, he, t- he took a lot on his shoulders as well as he should have last week for not making better decisions. I think Dak's going to use that RPO a little bit more aggressively in strategic situations. He's not going to be worried about third and 20, but if you got third and three, third and five, see if we can pick it up. Oh, cool. Okay, so your pod pick for first rushing Dak touchdown, Dak Prescott. Right. Okay. I am going to go with... Deuce Vaughn. Hmm. Whoa, Deuce Vaughn. That's right. He was used for like one snap on special well, teams. That's last why week. they lost. They're right? opening up the offense, as <laughs> okay, I said. I love it. Week. Deuce I love Vaughn going to get. Uh, there's going to be a two back set, and uh, he's going to get a pitch outside and going to beat him to the cone. Mm. And touche Bill Belichick, who that's had right. his eye on that guy in the next round. So you're right. saying, pod pick. Pod pick. Okay. Pod pick, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn, Vaughn Deuce first Vaughn. rushing touchdown. Gotcha. All right, got it right here. Hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, spell check says, no, you're wrong. It's Dice Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to take and Zeke. And my guy, first rushing touchdown. I, w- I would take Zeke, but I think it's going to be a big day for the guy who replaced Zeke okay. in Dallas. And that would be Re- no Tony Pollard. Okay. Rico Dowdle got his touchdown last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Screen but it wasn't pass, rushing. Right? Yeah. Rushing touchdown, Tony Pollard. And it will not be a red zone touchdown. Mm. Oh. Mm. Big play. Uh-huh. What? It'll be so, from so, like outside I said, they're the going to try to score outside the 20. They don't yeah, want to wait until right. they get in the red zone. That's yeah. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Just score from the 40 instead. Right. Of the 20. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Now, our regular picks. Pick to win, pick to click. What are you thinking, Everson? Cowboys win. I have – damn, I didn't even put down the score. But I was looking at 30 to 17. I don't know why I didn't write it down. 30 to 17. 30 to 17, 17 Cowboys. It's a blowout. And I look for a blowout, no, until the end. Mm. They will be within one score until the Cowboys decide to make moves. And I think that – my player would be, I didn't say Dak Prescott, didn't say, there it is, Cooks. They're going to make us throw to the slot man because they're going to try and kill it. They're going to try and double outside. I'm looking at Cooks to have a touchdown, and I look for him to have a big game. Okay. I like mm-hmm. it. I like it. The former New England Patriot, mm-hmm. Brandon Cooks. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, you Mickey. do Savannah? Oh, yeah, do Savannah's. She's got the Cowboys winning 17-14. Okay. Mm, man, that's going to be tough. And her pick to click is Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks. Oh, wow. See, smart girl. I always know. Which her. is what I was going to do. But <laughs> since there's already two of them, I'll try to come up with something different. Mm. I got the Cowboys 24-20. Okay. And my pick to click. It's going to be Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong for Mickey. I'm taking these uh, way out picks, aren't I? Mm-hmm. No, I like it. I like it. I, I almost picked Dorrance last week. Yeah? Yeah, I did. Uh, he comes through in games like that most of the time. I don't think he got enough snaps last <laughs> week. They're going to rectify that. All right. So, uh, my... Pick for the game. Uh, How do you get to go last, by the way? This is not your show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is the deal here? I'm going with the Cowboys <laughs> winning 24-23 on a last-second field goal by, by Brandon, Brandon Auburn. Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> despite, despite the fact that I told him yesterday when they were kicking field goals, oh, that he, was spraying he hit them. one off the right upright and one off the left upright. What we'll score? What we'll score? 24-23, gotcha. eight field goals by Dang, Brandon you Auger. got a nail goals. by him, man. <laughs> Golly. He's going to have <laughs> eight field goals. 18 straight <laughs> field goals. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my pick to click is Demarcus Lawrence. D Law is my pick. Okay. Right? D Law. What do you think? He, what's he gonna do? He's gonna stop the run. Oh, okay. I you see that run? I defense? thought. Well, I thought you, you see were gonna those be defensive ends. The same principle that Mickey's got there with Dorrance Armstrong. I thought you were gonna have you D-Law. know D Law will some stop specifics like a sack. Or... D D Law will stop the run mm-hmm. on the way to the quarterback. Okay, I'll give you. Uh, we'll have a sack and a tackle for loss mm-hmm. in addition to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Finally. I got one more for you. What? How many yards does Zeke get? Uh, I am going to And keep in mind, uh, Everson, we talked about this earlier this week. Okay. When, when Emmett returned. Yeah. He had six carries for minus one yard. No, that was I remember that. Not he got happened. hurt. He got hurt. Mm-hmm. I, that was not good. Yeah. They, they broke his shoulder. That was I'm not, not good. Sure. His, Plus, uh, he was 38 years old. They broke his spirit. That's what the heck happened. <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> it had nothing to do with his shoulder. I'm going to say he has 65 yards. 65 yards on how many carries? Ten. Ten? I was going to say 50. Oh, six and a half yards a carry? I was going to say 50. 50 yards, 10 carries. And then after that, he will become irrelevant because they will have to start throwing you the ball. You said 10 for 50? 10 for 50. You know what I'm going? I think he's going to have, in a 24-23 game, he's going to have 18 carries for no. 101 no, yards. No, 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 no. But the Cowboys no, will no, win no, 24 no. Uh-uh. We can't give, We can't give him that kind of glory coming back home, man. It's I, been, like, you know, I like him. How many games has it been since – no, it's good. It's all good. Hmm. Since since Cowboys he's rushed the game. for 100 yards. How many t- how many games has it been since? You, so you you want to have your cake and eat it too? You yeah, can't, uh-huh. you can't yeah, I already it. looked. Right. Yeah, I did the research. <laughs> how many how many games ago did Zeke run for 100 yards in a game? God, it's been a minute. It's been 30 games yeah. ago. It was October 5th. Uh, it was the Giants game of the 2021 season. Mm-hmm. Mac Jones might. Throw for 300 yards, and, but they're not running for 100 on the And his how many 100 yard games does he have in his career? 25. I think it's 29. I think it's been since Monday, since I looked it up. So that would be this 30th 100 yard game. Anyway, there we go. That's, that would make we it can very let that interesting. No, we yeah. can't let that happen. All right. It's uh, been a fun week. What are you doing this weekend? Um, uh, you got to work? I've got a uh, grandkid uh, <laughs> basketball game at 9 o'clock tomorrow, a T-ball game at noon. He's got to look at the actually, schedule. you got to look at the coaching, schedule in the refrigerator. I'm coaching a girls' basketball game at 2.30. Oh, no. And I've got another grandson's basketball game at uh, 4.15, and then the Sooners play at 6 o'clock. So oh, what's the, very what's, convenient. What's the over and under on the kids' game? <laughs> yeah. How old the girls' basketball? It's high school. High school? High school age, yeah. Oh, I've, my. I've I'm uh, been asked to sit on the bench. Gotta go. <laughs> <'Cause> it, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> All that's right. Not what, done yet. That's right. That does man. it. Oh, and yes, here comes are. Nate <laughs> in Frisco coming up here on DallasCowboys.com. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!